Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chopping Blocks Google Plus Hangout today. We are discussing one of our most famous desserts, our homemade apple pie. Today we have Chef Michelle Glancy with us. She's actually going to be making a pie with us and teaching us how to do everything from the crust to the filling. And we also have Chef's assistant Claire Smith with us. And she's going to be helping us along. She's attended and worked so many chopping block classes. She knows everything that you guys out there are going to want to ask. But if you want to ask your own questions, just post that to our Google Plus page. And Michelle and Claire and I will get to it during this broadcast. I do want to apologize. We're a few minutes late getting started. We had some technical difficulties. Um, so our apologies for that. But now we're going to get right into the best dessert for Thanksgiving, apple pie. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. So today we're going to make uh, our famous chopping block apple pie. And it's going to be a double crust pie, too. So we're going to start with rolling out the bottom layer of the pie dough and talking a little bit about the recipe. And then we'll jump in how to make the yummy filling. And then we'll roll out another layer of pie dough so that you guys can really master the art of rolling dough out. But uh, what I want to uh, kind of drive home today about making pie dough is don't let it boss you around. You have to be in charge of it and make sure that you keep everything moving quickly and that everything is cold. And that starts when you make the recipe as well. Uh, some people are even crazy enough to create their food processor bowl with the blade in it and all of their dry ingredients. Our chopping block recipe is two cups of all-purpose flour. Um, it's going to be uh, one to two tablespoons of sugar and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. And uh, we're going to use a variation of butter and shortening. It's mostly butter, one and a half stick. And we use a quarter cup of shortening so that we get some leavening, we get some lightness, we get some texture. So the butter is for flavor and the shortening is for the flaky finish. All cold ingredients. Um, you guys want to get your food processor bowl out, this is the best way to make it. I know a lot of people um, you know, have poor experiences making pie dough in food processors, but what I want to drive home is that you guys are probably taking your time doing it and letting everything mash together. You want to be quick as a bunny with your food processor, and you want your fat to be in pretty big chunks because that machine is going to tear it down. So don't chop it into teeny little pieces. That's what the machine is for. And you'll drizzle in a third cup of cold water, almost about two or four pulses into blending the fat into the dry ingredients. And just keep drizzling it in. Uh, you want to, again, get this pie dough out of the food processor and off into your refrigerator as quickly as possible. That batch, those ratios that I just gave you, that's going to give you the bottom crust and the top crust as well. So if you're just going to do pumpkin pies this Thanksgiving, you can make two pumpkin pies out of these ratios. Now that I have this on the countertop, uh, what you won't be able to see via the internet is that there's still marbling of the fat into that flour and water base. And that's important. You always want to see that marbling from making the dough, even to rolling it very, very thin. I have my cast iron pan here, which is how we like to do our apple pies chopping block. And I'm now going to just roll the bottom crust up onto my rolling pin just to transfer it very easily to this guy. And we don't treat the cast iron pan either. You guys have enough butter in the dough that it'll crisp up and the, the flaky texture of the crust just kind of seizes away from the cast iron pan. So you'll be good without buttering it. So you just want to take your rolling pin. I prefer a baker's pin, which doesn't have any handles to it and it doesn't have that middle part that spins. And you're just going to gently roll the dough towards you and let it kind of envelop itself around the pie pin, the baker's pin. And then we're just going to lightly, a little like this. And we're just going to lightly unroll it. You get it pretty thin as well. You're going to have a little hanging over, and that's fine. We'll show you how to make a really nice crust with it. 
but that's just going to be the bottom layer for right now. If you have a fridge nearby, put it in the fridge um, while you make the filling. So now, we have all of our filling ingredients here and ready to go. So the filling is going to be, um, I think it's three and a half pounds, three pounds or three and a half pounds of apples. So usually that's going to be about six or seven Granny Smith apples. Uh, I have a full cup of sugar in here with the apples that I cut up into. I think what you can This guy's going to be in the oven for an hour, hour and 15 minutes until it's all finished. And if you have really thin slices of apples, you're going to have applesauce inside of all these crusts. So we want a little texture, we want a little meatiness to it. I also have a little cinnamon and some salt. You know, to make it taste good. And you just want to mix it all up while that bottom layer is chilling in the fridge and it's cast iron pan. Alright, that looks pretty good. The sugar is going to start to draw the water content of the apples, so it's going to get a little more wet in the next few minutes while it sits together, but that's fine. That's a good thing. We're not at all concerned about that. One thing people struggle with with rolling out their pie dough is um, not only do they kind of panic and freak out when it starts to split at the ends, or even if they get a crack in it, they stop. Stopping is the worst thing you can do because Ultimately, the butter and the shortening are just going to get warm and warm and more warm. It's going to end up with no texture left to the crust. It's not going to flake and be that picture-perfect Thanksgiving pie. It's going to be kind of all blended together. So it'll still taste pretty good, but you're going to miss out on that good texture, that flaky finish that we desire from our crusts. Uh, we have here another batch of dough. Uh, again, this is... Just the second half of that batch that you made from the two cups of flour, uh, one and a half sticks of butter, a quarter cup of shortening, that ratio that we just went over in the beginning. Andrea, can you see like any marbling to the dough? You can you guys see that? Yeah. No. Absolutely. Marbling and some fat in it. That's important. We always want to see that as we've made it. And again, even too as we roll it out on the countertop. When you pack it into the saran wrap, do it in a round and do it as flat as possible because ultimately you're going to roll it into a round pie dish and it just helps to be not big and kind of piled high, but flat on a disc. You have less rolling to do. So keep that in mind as you pack it away. And then what I want, as we have a round sitting on the countertop that we want to keep round, always imagine that the center of the dough is like a bullseye or crosshairs. And we're going to roll from the middle towards ourselves, and we'll go back to the middle of the rolling pin and roll away from ourselves. And we continue this process the whole time so that we keep that round shape. You'll notice, too, as I begin rolling this guy out, that I'm constantly picking the dough up and turning it around and turning it around. Often we'll roll a beautiful, thin, perfect round out onto the countertop, but if you've never moved it and redusted flour underneath of it, it's going to be glued to the countertop at that point in time. So that's going to put, um, certainly, the breaks on your plan for Thanksgiving. Michelle, we go to that middle section. We want to roll towards ourselves. We go back to the middle, and we roll away from ourselves. And about every two or three turns, I pick it up, and I redust down below. I dust the top a little bit. And then also, this is a huge culprit. Your baking pan is going to tear your pastry dough if you don't give it a light dusting every time. You pick that dough up and move it around. Michelle, do you have to be cautious of the amount of flour that you're using when rolling out the dough? Absolutely. I think people know that they need flour down, but how much flour is a bit of a mystery. Nobody can ever sit by your side while you roll a pie dough out. Um, I just have like a little measuring cup here that has no specific measuring of flour. And you just want to do a little flick of the wrist. It's a really light dusting. Think about it as an insurance policy but you're not trying to incorporate all of that flour back into the dough. So light dusting. And sometimes as we roll dough, we have to redust the bottom maybe three or four times. As long as it's pretty light, 
and all that flour is doing is helping you move the dough on the countertop, that's perfect. If you have mountains of dough piled up around, uh, or rather mountains of flour piled up around your dough, you've got a problem. Um, it's probably inhibiting the rolling process a little bit because there's just flour all over the place, and it's not doing just that light, delicate uh, insurance policy that we talked about. So you want to control it, but you need enough to keep things moving. You know, a quarter of a teaspoon isn't going to get half of a, a pie dough rolled out for you. Michelle, you said that the pie dough was made with shortening and butter. Uh huh. If you didn't have shortening, could you just make an all butter crust? Absolutely, and it's going to be really flavorful as well. Butter is flavor. We know that about butter. Um, what butter does, though, is we get a more brittle finish to the pie crust. Um, I like to talk about chocolate chip cookies. I think this drives the point home a little bit better when we talk about shortening. Have you ever had a chocolate chip cookie that's really thin and crunchy? Mm -hmm. That was probably made with all butter and cooked at, you know, a reasonably high temperature. And have you ever had a chocolate chip cookie that's somewhat cakey and fluffy? So that was made probably with a little bit of shortening. Shortening doesn't melt as quickly as butter does going into the oven. So if you made a beautiful little kind of braid or pumpkin pie cutout shaped crust for your pie this Thanksgiving, it's really important that you don't um, use an all-butter crust to make something decorative because you're going to lose that when it goes into the hot oven. You're going to spend a little bit of time making something really, really pretty, and none of your guests are going to get to see it. So it's important that we use that shortening, which doesn't melt as quickly as butter in the oven, uh, when we um, are attempting to do something very pretty. I like it, though, too, for the flaky factor. I think that that's really important. Um, because we, we do strive for texture in our food. One thing that I don't like about Thanksgiving food is that it's all mushy. I mean, nothing really is crunchy except for the little French's crispy onions on top of the green bean casserole. And that's probably why everybody scrapes all that off the top. Because <laughs> they're looking for a little crunch. They're looking for a little texture in their food. So it's important that we do think about texture when we're not only baking our pies, but just making food in general. Speaking of texture, I noticed that your apples, you took the peel off. I what did. do you think about people who leave the peel on their apples? Is there any benefit to doing that? A lot of people that do stuff like that That's outside of uh, no. Um, it gets, you know, for me, the skin just gets a little withery. You know, and you're going to cover it with the, at least here at the Chopping Block, we do a double crust of pie. And you're going to cover that all up, too. So for me, it's kind of like tomato skins and spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce. Like it's a textural thing. It's kind of weird. I would rather just have the lusciousness of the fruit. Um, and since you're not going to see the green, you're not going to see the color left over, the red, if you chose to use the red apple, I, I think it's a little unnecessary. But, you know, to each his own. Everybody has their own tradition. I always peel mine. I do too, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me get one more roll. See, though, how uh, the pie dough is kind of blending into our white countertop here. But you can see my movement of the hands. I can turn this dough completely around. It's a little thin for me to pick up because it still has some weight to it. So if I hold it in my hands, I'm either going to poke one of my fingers through it or it's going to tear hanging off of my wrist. So I don't want to pick it up. That's not necessary. But what I do want to always be able to do is move it on the countertop. And we should always be able to put the back of our hand to the dough and feel a chill coming from it. If we don't have cold coming from the dough, We've really been working it way too long. It's been out of the refrigerator way too long as well. And if we don't have cold fat the whole time, it tends to melt back into that flour and water mixture that really pulls the whole thing together. And that's where we move that flaky texture. Okay. Let me give it one more pass, and then we're going to top this off. Before I top it off with the last layer of pie dough, and before I roll it up on my trusty baker's tin right here, what I want to do is just take a little knife, and we're going to score uh, just some cuts into the top. If you have a cute little pumpkin pie, or rather pumpkin um, or apple cookie cutter, you can do the same thing. But we need to allow some of that steam to release so that we don't really just like 
you know, mush over the apples on the inside and really soften the dough from the inside. We want some of that extra water content to leap off into the oven. So I'm just going to create some little slits here with my knife. Um, a paring knife or a pair of scissors will do the same thing. Honestly, I've rolled it up and put it on pies before. I've done it on top of the apples, too. So it's just important to remember before it goes in the oven, we do want to create an air pocket for these guys to, uh, you know, that steam to evaporate well. So let me take the cast iron here, and then all of our apples with the cinnamon, the sugar, that flour. Why do we use flour in this? What's the point? Well, we actually, the flour is kind of key and crucial in making the pie dough. What I'm going to be looking for on the other side in about an hour when I'm going to take this guy out of the oven is bubbling juices. Yes, I want the crust to be golden brown, but I also want to see some bubbling juices going on inside the pie. And that means that we've heated the water content that the apples have released that have melted into the flour. We've heated the flour enough to pop the starch to activate the thickening property that when this is just slightly cool, when it's, uh, you know, like you've waited forever for it to cool down so you can slice into it and have a piece of pie. When it's just slightly cool, you'll take a nice slice out of here and you'll get that like, picture perfect commercial ooze of goodness, that sugary cinnamon bit that slides down the side of the pie, rather than this running all over the place. So anytime we do a fruit pie and there's usually a thickener in there, I like to use flour, but cornstarch, arrowroot, these guys will do the same thing for you. Um, you want to see those bubbling juices in between the slits that we just cut on top of the crust. And that lets you know that your pie is ready to come out of the oven, that you've done what you were supposed to do. All right, so let's just layer. Oops, one last thing. We need a couple little tablespoons of butter on top. So you want just some little pieces of cold butter here. This is one going to add a little more flavor. It'll melt into that flour and make like a little dessert roux right in the oven. And it aids in that thickening process. And we won't taste just kind of raw, mealy flour. It'll be much more rich. Is there any benefit to using cast iron other than just the aesthetic look of it? It makes a great presentation, but... It's a beautiful presentation. Everybody's if I don't have cast iron, what do I do? Uh, you know, most pie dishes are perfectly acceptable. What I always tell people about cookware or bakeware in general is that it should have a nice weight to it. It shouldn't be light and flimsy, um, something that like the wind could carry away with it. We really want in cooking and in baking heat retention in our pans, in our cookware, and to have a, a solid weight to it, you know that you have good heat retention. So we'll get even browning all across the bottom. If for some reason we just wanted to like flip it over and see the bottom of the crust, you would see perfectly golden brown, beautiful pie crust all across the bottom. When you use like really nice cast iron for what we sell here is a meal on the it's a beautiful line of ceramic ware, and it makes all your crust perfect and the capsule is just delicious. And also too at Thanksgiving, when you're really, you know, trying to make sure that everything's hot coming out of the oven, coming out of the kitchen to go to the table, to have cookware that retains heat like that, bakeware that retains heat like that, is really a lifesaver. That way you're not going to have cold side dishes while the turkey is still quite hot. So I just wanted to have a nice way. Cast iron is really beautiful. It's it's fairly inexpensive too. It's looks very approachable. But uh, it should just be nice and heavy. Um, something that you uh, know will give you that beautiful golden brown. I do deter people from using glass. I know a lot of us inherited that when we graduated from college and our, our mother's like bridal showers back in the day. Um, but it really it, it refracts the light and you get spotty finishes to your pie crust. It doesn't brown evenly, it doesn't cook even on the bottom. So I deter people from using glass. So that's kind of a long thing that So right now what I've started doing is I'm taking very simply pie crust. Um, I think doing the edging and everything, people stick with the old floor um, because that's quite simple. But a great, really easy, simple way that anybody can do, even my sister in law can do, uh, is just to take the top crust and curl it up 
under the bottom crust. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it really looks kind of rustic and home style, like you stopped out of the way from Michigan back into the city to pick up an apple pie. That's exactly what it looks like. And it also, if you want to get kind of creative with it, if you want to practice your, your knuckles, like the two knuckles and one knuckle in to do a nice little crimp, it builds height for you. It builds a nice um, you know, little height and width for you to practice working on something like that. But if you want to give the kids something to do too, they can certainly wrap the top up and they can contribute to the meal as well. All right, so that's our apple pie. Beautiful. We're going to have it three fifty. And um, one last thing, we want the crust to have a little sweetness to it, and to get a nice little, you know, kind of barely shine to it, we're going to flatter it with heavy cream and one more sprinkling of granulated sugar. So let me grab my heavy cream, and we'll get it off into the oven. And Claire, you recently made a apple pie for a local cooking competition. Why don't you tell us about the uh, variation you made? I did. I actually um, I took our exact pie crust. I used that, and um, I used Granny Smith apples. Um, the difference that I did is I added a little vanilla and a little lemon zest to the apples, and uh, I made a homemade caramel that I poured Ooh. into the apple. Yeah, it was delicious. Uh, I cut down on the sugar a little bit since the caramel was in there. I didn't want it to be overly sweet. And uh, it, it was good enough to come in second place. Awesome. I was pretty excited. I was going to bring my ribbon down, but I didn't want <laughs> Bring your ribbon to work. We can put it okay. on the communication board. <laughs> hey, um, Andrea, is the pie dough um, recipe on the website? Memory fails me. We will make sure that it is. Um, okay. It I is. I think I rattled off some ratios, but um, yeah. people want to be able to access that during their Thanksgiving we will uh, meal preparation. Okay, so nice, healthy slathering of heavy cream. Well, there's many different egg washes that you guys can use for tart and pie dough. Um, they're all going to give you just a little bit different of a finish. Uh, egg whites tend to be very drying and glassy, so you almost get this like uh, new layer. It looks like it's fake even sometimes from the just egg white wash. Or we can use a combination of yolks and heavy cream or milk. Um, you guys will bake more and more and more and decide what it is that you prefer to wash with. Michelle, is this pie going to be done by the time I get to work? Absolutely. We're going to have pie for dinner tonight. Fabulous. All righty. One last trick for any of you pie makers out there just to save yourself a whole headache and a lot of trouble is you always want to have a nice, solid, heavy-duty cookie sheet or pan. And I do this not just for pies and baked goods, but anything that goes in and out of the oven. Um, one, if things start to bubble over um, and are going to become disastrous, they're on that sheet tray. It's not going to be on the bottom of your oven. So it's a preserver to clean the oven. And then also, too, if you do a very decorative crust and you put these giant oven mitts on and you go in after that pie dish, quite often your thumbs end up ruining part of that really beautiful, delicious crust. So if you just put it on a cookie sheet like this, you guys won't have to disturb anything that's in the pie dish or in the casserole. She has so many great tips. <laughs> but I guess I do. All right, what else do we want to talk about with pies? Well, as I think most people um, know, the Chopping Block offers pies this week for Thanksgiving. So you can um, order a pumpkin, classic pumpkin, which comes in an aluminum tin dish, um, and that's $18.50. And our apple pie is just exactly like Michelle just showed you. It comes in the cast iron beautiful dish, which you can keep and use the rest of your life, because we know cast iron. Um, is one of those things that we can pass on to generation to generation. Or you can return it and get an $18 discount. Um, our apple pies go for $42.95, but again, that does include the skillet price in, in there. Um, today is the last day to order the pies, so we need you to place your orders at thechoppingblock.net by 7 p.m. tonight. Um, and we'll have, we have pickup available 
both of our locations in Lincoln Square as well as the Merchandise Mart um, both tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we make it really easy on you if you're feeling the last I think we lost her. Oh, no. Do we have to fill in? Uh, maybe. Uh, where was she leaving I, off? I, uh, <laughs> I don't know if she's still recording or not. Um, Pick up for know. Tuesday or Wednesday at both locations. It's stress. Uh, You're All back. Right. Yeah, I had a little uh, connectivity issue there. Um, did you hear everything I said about pickup and phase and times? Just Tuesday and Wednesday, you said. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then both uh, Merchandise Smart and Lincoln Square. So if you're feeling a little bit stressed, you know, it's Monday of Thanksgiving week, and you may not want to tackle dessert in addition to the turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes, go ahead, place that order online today at theshoppingblock.net, and we'll take care of it for you. Guys, how many pies do you think, well, the two of you have made in your years at the chopping block? Can you even put a guess on it? Hundred. Yeah, yes. I couldn't even count. But actually, I didn't like pie until I started working at the chopping block. I was very much a cake person, but Shelly's apple pie has made me a pie lover. And yeah. I won't eat crappy pies anymore either because I know how good they taste. Well, you know, it's funny. I had this conversation. Um, I'm going to call out my mother this morning because um, I'm already at home for Thanksgiving week. And oh. uh, we were discussing the, the, the desserts for, for Thursday's meal. And she's like, Andrea, let's just, let me just buy a pie crust. And I was like, <laughs> no. Uh -uh. no. Uh -uh. Last year I was at home for Thanksgiving and my mom like bought a pie and I refused to eat it. It was disgusting. <laughs> I was like, absolutely not. But that, you know, that, that, you know, let's let's tell my mom why is a store or a bot pie or even the Pillsbury frozen not to call out Pillsbury but the frozen pie crust like wh why do you need it's to for yeah well actually yesterday Mario taught Thanksgiving workshop and as they were wrapping up I heard one of the guys from class on the phone with his mother say. I just took this amazing Thanksgiving workshop class, and they taught me how to make pumpkin pie. He's like, you're not going to buy pie this year, are you? Said, I'll make pie. And he talked his mom out of buying pie so that he could make the pumpkin pie. That's really impressive. That was good. Yeah. We're making believers out of people over and over again. And really the effort isn't, I mean, we just watched you make a pie in 20 minutes. I mean, and you were describing it. You could have done that a lot faster. Had you Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The effort is not that much trouble. I mean, it's not that much and trouble. It's, to make it's pie. worlds away from what you would buy at the store. It's just worlds away. And Thanksgiving is about the food and the love that you put into the food. And buying a store-bought pie is not love. No. <laughs> It's it's convenient, or and if that's all you can do, but yeah. or buy from the chopping block. That's homemade as well. Yeah, all of our pies are made just like you saw today by mm -hmm. our chefs and assistants in our kitchens, made with lots of pie. That's what we pie. <laughs> awesome. Go well, team thanks, pie. Thanks everybody for joining us today, Michelle. Did you have anything else to close out? Um, did you have anything to add before we say goodbye? Me? Okay. okay. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for our Hangout today. We will be doing this um, often, and you can catch them here on our Google Plus page. Make sure to follow us, and um, if you have ideas for what you'd like to see or just general questions that we can answer during the Hangout, just post them to our stream and we'll be sure to get to them. Uh, for now, goodbye from the chopping block, and happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.